Hello, everybody. Welcome in, welcome in. All right. Hi, all. Uh, I'm Matthias Baker. I'm going to be one of the hosts tonight um, alongside Sochi Corey. Uh, I currently work at Technical Multimedia Design Inc. as a programmer, um, and I'm also one of the directors of Haunt Comp, which is a haunted house design competition that is partnered with the uh, with Teed. So, Sochi. Hi, I'm Sochi. I also work at Technical Multimedia Design as an associate project manager, and I'm also one of the directors of Hong Kong. Awesome. So now that you know us, uh, we'll go through and introduce our panelists today. Um, our first panelist is Rob Tintock, a multifaceted and extremely talented themed entertainment designer. His work across the industry demonstrates a clear and deliberate focus on bringing to the forefront all of the magic behind theater, event design, and live entertainment. As a manager of production design at Universal Studios, Rob has helped realize a wide catalog of popular and varied events, such as Waterworld, Bill and Ted's excellent Halloween adventure, and the oh ho ho so fun Grinchmas. Alongside the incredible work he's done at Universal, Rob will oftentimes stop in to do guest lectures for the Essential Art Department, which in my session was an absolutely standout moment as his lecture was thorough, informative, and fun. Uh, fun being the absolute imperative word when it comes to describing Rob. Uh, only recently have I had the chance to spend some more time with him and right from the start, uh, as you get to know Rob, it's very clear that he's a fun and very kind man. Um, it's literally always a pleasure talking to you, and I'm very, very glad that you're here with us tonight, or this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, I'm happy to have some fun with you guys right now. Awesome. <clears throat> so then I'm going to introduce our next panelist. Uh, we have Justin Martin, an art director, creative director, and designer for themed entertainment experiences. His work pushes the boundaries of what we know as reality, transferring guests to places and moments completely opposite of your everyday lives. Uh, I got to actually first meet Justin a couple years ago during COVID uh, when he volunteered his time to help with one of the student projects I was working on. He mentored one of the attractions that we had and he gave us such valuable insight on art direction and how to create a truly unique experience and was one of the top mentors we had that year. Um, he also has worked for companies like Universal Studios and Meow Wolf, where he most recently worked on Convergent Station, which is an attraction that really pushes what it means to be a theme entertainment attraction, incorporating art and pushing the boundaries of how to do an environmental storytelling. He's also an instructor with the Ancestral Art Department and teaches um, designing for theme entertainment experiences. Um, theme entertainment design is a unique beast when it comes to making experiences, and he makes learning about production design digestible and fun. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm going to have to have you guys follow me around uh, and, and give me that intro everywhere I go, because that was amazing. <laughs> thank you all for uh, that awesome intro and, and super stoked to be here. Excited to be on this uh, crazy, amazing panel. Awesome. Next, we have Helen Matson, who is an award winning production designer with a passion for creating and captivating environments. Um, she works a she works to create worlds that we can only imagine, transforming guests to their wildest dream. She's a powerhouse and has worked on some of the biggest experiences in the industry. With her experience rooted in theatrical design, her extensive experience spans the theme entertainment industry, the retail industry, and experiential marketing. Her work with prestigious organizations such as PepsiCo, Universal Creative, and REA uh, showcases her ability to craft not only captivating visual experiences, that, but truly take audiences into the story and into the world of a brand. Helen creates spaces that people wish they could jump through a screen to see, such as her work on The Secret Life of Pets attraction at Universal Studios Hollywood. Her work across these companies and mediums all traces back to her love of making an audience feel completely immersed in a story just by exploring an environment. We can't wait to hear more about her valuable insight on theme entertainment production design. Thanks. Super happy to be here. Yes. And finally, I have the distinct pleasure of introducing our fourth panelist, Brandy Creason. 
Brandy is a bona fide tour de force in this industry, having spent more than 25 years in the art department. All of that experience has culminated in her current position as manager of art slash design HHN at Universal Studios. Um, it was through Brandy's involvement at Horror Nights that I was first able to meet her. And I can tell you all that she is that person. Um, she's working so hard week in and week out, boots on the ground, um, doing her very best to realize these amazing, beautiful and haunting mazes that Universal is so good at consistently turning out. And Brandy is a huge part of that. Um, despite all of that time and all of the effort that goes into doing the, like making those mazes, uh, Brandy still finds the time to be one of the absolute best teachers in our industry. Um, she co-founded the Essential Art Department alongside her partner in crime, Jamie Barkowitz. And I can personally attest from my session that Brandy is absolutely just one of the greatest teachers. Her lectures are thorough and informative but beyond just that, Brandy also really, really cares about her students and works really hard to bring out the best in her students, which is something that is just so special. Um, yeah, it's, it's always an absolute pleasure talking to you, Brandy, and I'm very glad that you could join us. Wow, uh, like everybody else said, thank you for that introduction. Yeah, you should follow us around everywhere. <laughs> um, but uh, super excited to be here. Uh, it's always a passion of mine and I speak that word a lot to everybody and anybody that knows me knows that I absolutely adore my job. I love every part about my job from the icky stuff all the way to the amazing stuff because it all brings a project together. It gives you your gratification as an artist and as a creative. And that was something that's missing in the industry was we have all of these amazing artisans out there and all of this stuff is in our brains and we just need to get it out and we need to share it with the world. So I'm always happy to um, explain to anybody, talk to anybody about my work and what I do. I love talking about what we do in this industry because it is so impactful to everybody and it basically leaves a legacy. I could be around forever. So uh, yeah, it's, I've, I don't know. I just love this industry so much. You'll hear me say that all the time about, about every aspect of this job. So I'm so excited to uh, be able to talk about what we do. Thank you. Yeah. And so speaking of all of that experience that you have in the industry, more than 25 years in the art department, how did you get your start? Well, that's always, uh, everybody always seems to start in a different place, right? Um, and, and end up sometimes where you don't think you're going to be. Although I think I had the unique situation uh, that I, a lot of people that I've run into in my life haven't had. And that's, I knew that I was going to be an artist in some form or fashion from the time that I was like three years old. I was drawing Disney characters, everything. I was just always into art dad was a musician mom was an artist so i had to do one of those it was going to be an easy transition so art was always in my blood and uh again you never know what aspect of the industry you're going to land in but if you have that as a base and you kind of know what pathway you're going to dive into it, it is helpful and then um getting into my bachelor's degree i got uh was getting a degree in graphic design and at the time of course, I'm going to date myself when when I was coming out as a graphic artist uh, with my bachelor's degree, uh, Photoshop had just come out like three years earlier. So it was just pretty brand new. And there was just way too many graphic artists out there. And I just didn't uh, I, I felt like I was going to get lost in the shuffle of commercial artists out there. And I wanted to find something else. So I took a couple of elective courses in theater design. And lo and behold, I like found this weird passion for designing scenery and sets. And I had no idea that that was a thing, that that was a viable option. And I have been lucky enough throughout my career to have mentors that always guided me and were always right there for me uh, to take me to an, another or a different level. So I had a mentor that was able to get me into graduate school. I came out uh, to California to go to CalArts. 
got my master's degree in theater set design. And then while you're in there, you know, you have a lot of professors that are working in the industry. So you get to shadow them and, and work with them. And not only were they doing theater, but they were doing film and television commercials, videos, all of this amazing stuff that this industry encompasses. And um, learning all of the details about everything that they do from, from paper to build, you know, uh, it was fascinating to me. And again, I found a quandary getting my master's degree in theater set design. There's not too many professional uh, set designers out there that can make really good money. And I was like, well, how do you, how do you make a stamp in this industry? Uh, so I ended up kind of gravitating more towards film and TV and, and then kind of found found a passion for hand drafting and construction drawing and found a little niche that way and kind of got headhunted by uh, a, a few companies after that. And then um, throughout my career, I've been mostly non-union and been able to kind of jump around from project to project. Uh, always have freelance for Universal Studios. And so I've actually been there with my designer since 1999 as a freelancer. And then about uh, seven years ago, they decided, well, you're always around. We might as well hire you full time. So now I'm there full time. So it's kind of funny when you think about how you got your start to where you go. But it's always like thinking, you know, OK, how am I going to take my degree and and, you know, make it work for me and actually make a career out of it? And then all of a sudden, these other pathways show up and there you go. You're off. It's amazing. Yeah. And thank you again for, you know, passing forward the mentorship. That's, that's, yeah, it's just so awesome. It's so awesome. Um, so then moving over, Rob, how do you get your stamp? Um, my start, uh, as Brandy says, we all kind of come from different places. Um, I, I was a jock in high school and I played football and um i my start came from uh my my uh best friend who i played football with um his mother uh was a art was a teacher and she taught the theater program she was in charge of the theater program in high school and because i was always around and you know like from uh not rehearsals from practice <laughs> um she had uh she had essentially conscripted me to join uh, the theater department and do stuff because she, uh, first off, just needed boys um, who didn't want to join. Um, and so I started getting to doing theater that way. I've always had a um, interest in art and I was like, but I never wanted to be a fine artist. I was missing something there. Um, and I found it in theater um, because I, what I realized was that I loved, I loved more than just painting and drawing and doodling. And I always drew, I always, doodled um but what i really enjoyed was the storytelling um and i am not a performer i'm not an actor i don't have those skill sets um but uh, i discovered that in uh in design work i could apply the skills that i do have to help tell a story and that's really what captivated me to get into this so from uh from high school uh, i i completely just this was you know uh new to my family, new to a lot of people um, uh, of wanting to go into theater and the arts. No one ever thought I was going to do that. I never thought I was going to do that. Um, but then I, I went and I found um, a place to go uh, to study set design. Actually, I studied um, uh, design and technology for the theater. So it was a little bit more of a, um, uh, a generalized uh, uh, program at the University of Evansville in uh, Indiana. And then from there, I specialized and went to grad school uh, for set design at UCSD, um, <laughs> where uh, where I know a couple of uh, these fine people also went. Um, but I, um, uh, I essentially just started off generally wanting to be part of theater, wanting to be part of storytelling, and then started specializing um, and finding out what I was really good at and how I could help tell that story. Um, and I went from that and went to school for that. Um, and then out of school, um, I I actually started in New York and wanted to go. I just thought I would, you know, as a traditional theater designer, go into Broadway. Um, and then I started um, broadening my 
horizons because I just needed to make money <laughs> and I was trying to find work where I could utilize all my skill sets. Um, and I found my way at, to Universal Studios Hollywood. Um, and I started picking up some side work and um, and I was an assistant designer. Um, uh, and then I started doing design work um, and similar to Brandy where I started off as a contractor and then they were like, hey, you're always around. <laughs> um, uh, maybe we should uh, hire you. Um, and you know, I couldn't say no. I uh, there's something really fulfilling about being able to create these worlds um, and see it come to life. And I have been able to do that uh, here at Universal Studios. Awesome. Also on TCSD, uh, Justin, how'd you get your start? Yeah, uh, you know, again, uh, a little bit different, maybe than some people on the call, but uh, probably not too different than a lot of students that are actually in my class. Uh, a lot of the time, uh, you know, now we find that uh, students kind of go into school knowing exactly that they want to be in themed entertainment. And uh, that was the same for me. Uh, and that kind of started at a young age in, in the 90s, uh, growing up going uh, to Disney World a lot. Uh, I, I grew up on the East Coast. So knew I wanted to uh, kind of I, or I should say, I fell in love with going to the theme parks. I love the whole transformative experience that you got uh, going in there. And, you know, I tell the story of uh, my mom uh, talks about how when I was younger, I said, you know, what, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I was like, I want to work for Disney. And uh, really that translated into like, I wanted to make this kind of stuff. Um, and so, you know, figuring out where I wanted to go to school, uh, ended up at, at Savannah College of Art and Design. And that was pre uh, a lot of the themed entertainment courses that started to show up around the country. And even with, with uh, SCAD's course. Um, and while I was there, uh, uh, the late George Head and, and Mike Devine now, uh, had started a new program for themed entertainment uh, my sophomore year, and I jumped in on that, and it was just a you know, match made in heaven. Uh, and so I started to tailor a portfolio that was both uh, production design and set design related, but also really knowing I wanted to be in themed entertainment and kind of creating, instead of maybe sets for theater, uh, I was designing a quick service restaurant or a parade float or something like that. So I really fell in love with, you know, doing the design work for themed entertainment specifically. Um, and then really ever since then, uh, I had the opportunity to, to jump in on a lot of different companies uh, in my about 10 years now of working in the industry uh, from uh, the Thinkwell Group, uh, Universal Studios, uh, Hollywood, and then Universal Creative, um, and Meow Wolf, uh, which was my uh, previous job to my current job now where I'm at uh, OC Vibe Sports and Entertainment, which is uh, a subsidiary of, of the uh, Anaheim Ducks hockey team. So uh, I've always kind of lived by the motto of uh, I just want to work on cool stuff, uh, themed entertainment, uh, obviously specifically, uh, but really creating awesome and impactful guest experiences. So whether that's a museum or a theme park or a, a very trippy art experience like Meow Wolf 2, working on uh, what the guest experience is like uh, going to a hockey game in the surrounding area. Uh, it's really just been a passion of mine. So it's been very fortunate to be able to work on a variety of different projects uh, to get me to where I'm at now. You've definitely done a lot of very, very cool stuff. <laughs> Thank well, you, yeah. And last but not least, Helen, what's your uh, origin story? Oh, origin story. Um, so I actually grew up as a theater kid. Um, and I grew up in Florida, so I spent a lot of time at the theme parks, uh, kind of obsessed with immersive environments and environmental storytelling. Um, and I got a degree in theatrical set design at the University of Florida and then moved up to New York for a few years to do a more traditional theatrical set design. Um, and then, then I saw Sleep No More in New York, and it completely uh, changed my trajectory, I think to um, focus more on immersive storytelling. If you guys haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. Um, and I wanted to get back into interactive immersive environments. Uh, so I took a internship with Walt Disney Imagineering in Orlando. Um, and then that led into uh, working on Halloween Horror Nights for Universal Art and Design in Orlando, which was a blast. And I think that was the real spark in my career because I uh, go Gators, yeah. Um, I felt like I, I found my people and um, I found uh, my passion at art and design. Um, and then that led into um, eight years at Universal Creative working on um, attractions like Volcano Bay, uh, Secret Life of Pets, and Super Nintendo World. Um, 
And now I'm working at PepsiCo and doing experiential marketing, and it's been a blast. Well, speaking of working at PepsiCo, Helen, could you talk a little bit about your design process, whether you want to talk in general or a specific project? Like, what, uh, what's your design process and what challenges have you encountered and how do you overcome them? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, everything's based on story. Everything starts with what is the story you're trying to tell? Um, so I think uh, every choice that you make design-wise, starting from concept all the way through to completion, should go back to what's the what's the final goal, what's the final story, and does it serve the story? Um, and I think it, it really helps when you're working with so many different departments, whether that's operations or marketing uh, or people that don't necessarily have the same background as you. If you can get them on board with the story you're trying to tell, it's just it's so much easier. Um, and they can come in with ideas and yes and 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 build off of it um, if they're they're on board with the, the story. Yeah. Hey Justin, how about you? Yeah, I, you know, very similar. Everything is going to start with the story uh, process wise. A lot of the time, you know, a variety of different projects I'll come in on different phases. Uh, so a lot of the, you know, we'll, we'll start either in uh, a blank page where we're developing sketches and uh, coming up with, you know, stuff just off the cuff, trying to figure out what is going to be the, you know, that impactful moment that we can give a guest. Uh, where where do we want to put our guest itself? Do we want to, you know, uh, I'll use Meowl, for example. We we take our guest through a variety of different spaces uh, in that experience. Uh, so it starts off, you know, where, where would be cool? What, what do we want to, you know, invite people to go and, and explore? Um, and so sometimes we're, we're developing at a very early spot like that uh, to, you know, developing 3D models, uh, more sketches, uh, more 3D models and uh, developing uh, show set packages and, and kind of going from from there until we get, you know, that final product where we're sending things out to to bid and, and eventually taking it into the field. Um, but really, a lot of my, my process lies in, uh, I, I like to tell people my, my three skill sets are uh, doing some drawing, doing some 3D modeling, and doing some writing. Uh, and so that's kind of the, the tool chest I like to come uh, and, and be able to have those conversations, like Helen said, with, with operations, with our creative team, with our, uh, our fabricators and install team, to be able to make sure we're all on that same page, delivering what our final product was designed to be from the very start. Um, and so, yeah, really, it's, it's kind of a, a small tool chest, but it, it seems to work pretty well. <laughs> hey, Brandy, how about you? Especially dealing with attractions such as haunts that go up and down so quickly. Absolutely. So, um, you know, everybody's always amazed that we, uh, we have a giant beast of a project and it gets bigger every year. Um, and again, I'm based in Hollywood. So ours is uh, Universal Studios Hollywood. And um, our, our process is, it's very similar to, to what Helen and Justin said, where it starts with the storyline. And then, you know, we have to work a design package uh, with my, uh, with, you know, making my designer, uh, Chris Williams' vision kind of come to life, you know, and John uh, Murdy, our creative director, has written a fabulous treatment uh, for a story of a maze. And then from there, it's, you know, my job now is managing this group of amazing set designers um, that work in film and TV and out there in the industry currently. And uh, they all have a different little bit of a skill set. And then, um, I'm able to manage them and again, get Chris's kind of design vision uh, put together uh, in a design package. And then uh, from, from there, you know, we send it out into the field uh, to our construction and our scenic vendors. And that's always, that's always the uh, highlight of my part of the job is I love the boots on the ground because I love dealing with vendors. I love the camaraderie with our team. And, and again, you're building these, these, these teams that can are cohesive and can talk to each other and just kind of know each other's process. And as you, you know, as you develop these teams, you kind of stay in sync. And, and I think that's why our, our HHN process, you know, over the years as we're streamlining it, and even though it's growing and our team is always expanding, you know, we're always streamlining our process. Um, and then um, seeing it, uh, you know, again, go from paper, flat drawing paper to up and you're out in the field. And I, like I said, I love working with vendors and people and I learn on my job every single day. I learn materials and new ways to do things. And 
and um, you know new design ideas from my designer as well. Uh, so that's uh, where you know hopefully for Justin and Rob and and Helen and anybody else uh, designing out there in the industry where you get your gratification is when that project is finally finished and you're just standing back and you know, you're like trying to take a breath but but especially for me watching people like pour out of the mazes at the end when they're coming out and they've just you know been scared and they're emotional and they're crying and screaming and they drop to the ground laughing or or maybe you know having a bad moment with smells or fright or whatever that's where i get my gratification uh, and, and I think that uh, that fuels designers too on many levels. Like when you create, when you're able to create a project, then you take it from its infancy to its final iteration, uh, and and you get your gratification when you get to stand back and watch that theater show that you just designed go up, or that experience, or that event, right? So it's very all the processes are very similar, and the skill sets that you pack into your your toolbox they they all like run the gamut. You can do just about anything. But but yeah, that's a, a little bit a little bit of our process for Halloween. Again, it's kind of a small team behind the scenes, but it's a huge team to make it all happen out in the park um, when it's you know up and running. So. Awesome. Thank you. Hey, Rob, how about you, especially with um, working on similar holiday events? And can you talk about a specific challenge you've faced as well? Um, <laughs> uh, oh, gosh. <laughs> Randy and Jamie, who's watching this, is going to love this because uh, the I think we all have this challenge um, and, you know, uh, easily uh, what, what everyone just talked about in the process. That is totally it. Um, I want to kind of go back to uh, Helen's comment on uh, you start with story, right? And you base it on story. Um, and uh, what Justin was saying about like, you just have uh, your set of tools to tell your story. Um, one of the tools that I um, reluctantly use, utilize all the time um, is uh, how do you get your story across? How do you maintain your story um, within, um, within your resources? Um, and that is uh, that's always a consistent challenge, right? We we have grand ideas, we have big ideas. We want to produce all the things. Um, uh, I um, the uh, I like to start with um, or ask the question of like, what do the guests see? What is going to be the guest experience? Um, um, and then to maintain that core of the guest experience, the story we're telling them. Um, so that as we go through these challenges of of are we do we have the time to do it do we have the budget to do it um, and all that stuff um, and figure out a way to uh, <laughs> um, to get there um, while maintaining the story. Um, so uh, I don't know how much specifics I uh, um, to talk about, but more or less, it's you know you you just start off with you want to create the world, you want to give that give everything, um, but you might not have the means to do it. Um, it's that that tool, you know, that tool in your toolkit to to go back to what is the story you're trying to tell and make sure that um, whatever cuts or changes or um, adjustments based on material choices and whatnot uh, still maintains that core. Um, and that's what you that's kind of what we have to do um, when we <laughs> uh, when we are faced with these challenges. Awesome. So uh, real quick before we transition to the next question, I just want to mention that we would absolutely love to be able to ask uh, some questions from our comments at the end of the show. So go ahead and, and sound off if you have anything you'd like to ask these lovely and talented people. Um, and then transitioning. So Brandy, you spoke a little bit about gravitating towards uh, film and television at the start. How did your skills transfer across those mediums? Um, and what differences were there? And how have they affected your experience as a creative? Well, there's there's always differences, little differences in the processes or the collaborative um, elements that you have to deal with uh, film and TV to theater to themed entertainment and live event experiences. Um, but but going into film and TV, I think, you know, probably 
one of the biggest differences, obviously, bet between what what I experienced in that world versus what I do now is the whole idea of the immersive uh, environment where film and TV is just you're designing a space and, and maybe it's just for this shot right here or, you know, a, a room shot is a smaller kind of a vision versus a themed entertainment environment or an event experience where the guests are totally enveloped uh, in, you know, almost like uh, 360 degrees. And that's, um, so, so that's, that's a bit of a different uh, design focus that uh, if you're going into film and TV, uh, that that you would learn uh, design wise. Design is all very similar. If you start out in thea theater, you have a proscenium, you have a focus. This is central focus. You're designing that. It's, it's a pretty easy transition into film and TV. But then again, the transition from there going into live experiences in you know immersive environments is is wow. Now everybody sees everything around me and. Not only that, but your guests are actually standing in the middle of what you're creating. So in film and TV, we don't have to worry about, you know, locking things down to the table because, you know, the the camera is just going to shoot it. Um, and maybe the actor is going to pick up a prop or something on the table versus an immersive experience. Um, and pets is, a, is I love pets for that example, because you're kind of in the middle of, of this environment and all the kids and everybody standing in line waiting to, to do the ride, you know, they're touching everything. They want to touch everything and they want to have their social media moment where they they post, um, you know, their photos and such. So everything has to, has to maintain, you know, it has a, so you, you learn, you know, there's, there's different materials and different things. It's different um, construction ways that you have to do stuff for those different um, avenues uh, in themed entertainment. But again, if, you, if we, I started in theater and it was a design vision. You're designing a piece of paper. It goes up, you know, uh, it's built, it's a show. Uh, and then it's the same, it's always the same idea. So the skill sets really do transfer and it's always amazing how many people think that they don't, but but they really do. And, and ours is a little bit different because I'm old school, we're a little bit old school. All of our stuff is really done mostly to this day by hand. So we do a ton of hand drafting, hand drawing, hand sketches, and then we send that out to our tech department who converts it all to construction and CAD, right? Versus, um, you know, the new generations coming up, Justin and Helen, who who do a little bit more of their experiential stuff, you know, computer-wise. Um, ours is definitely more hand-based and it's a dying art, but I love it. So hopefully I didn't bird walk too much. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, Helen, would you like to speak a little bit about this? Yeah. Um, I, I agree that uh, transferring to different uh, mediums, there's, there's a new language that you have to learn, but all of that's adaptable. Um, you can learn new programs. You can learn the, the new language easily. Um, but the one thing that's super transferable to every industry I've ever worked in is just not being a jerk. Um, all the people that you work for um, and work with um, will extend your career further. Uh, and the reality is we're all really passionate and excited about design and creativity and um, just having compassion and, um, and, and being nice to your coworkers is by far the, the biggest thing that's going to get you far in this career. Amazing. And Justin, what are you? Yeah, I, you know, I, I have to echo both of those. Helen's point uh, is incredible because I think that's such an underrated uh, thing. Like, you know, what I was about to say was uh, the biggest transfer is because I'll, I'll talk to people that are like, well, I'm interested in film or I'm interested in game design or, or themed entertainment. It, my, my answer always is design is design. Um, but also, yeah, don't be a jerk. Uh, like this is such a small industry um, that uh, you're going to know everybody. You're going to get to meet everybody. Uh, it's a it's it, you don't want to burn any of those bridges. Um, but outside of that, yeah, I think, you know, the, if, if you're continuing to, uh, work on your craft, if you, once you find what you really want to do, if you want to be a concept artist, go all in on, 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 you know, being the best concept artist you can be. If you want to do 3d modeling, same for that, whatever that, that skill, that hard skill is that you're looking to be, um, 
within the industry, uh, go and be the best at it as you as you can. Uh, and I think that's the biggest skill set. Then, you know, times are going to change where you're ending up in different positions, different jobs, different almost industries. Like I said, I started uh, wanting fully in themed entertainment and now I work for a sports team. Um, so I think there's a little bit of uh, as long as you continue to, you know, perfect your design and perfect your craft and keep working at that stuff, you'll get opportunities to work in a variety of different fields that you might not have actually expected to, to end up in. Um, but yeah, I think like don't be a jerk and and continue to do design. I think is is like a really solid <laughs> basis for for uh, how to transfer those skills around. Um, and Rob, um, yeah, I mean, uh, absolutely. And to uh, it's hard not to like. To, actually, it's not. I would echo everything that um, uh, everyone just said about. Uh, <laughs> especially not to be a jerk. Um, I think I would actually just uh, formulate it as something that uh, Brandy and I have actually talked about a lot of um, is the idea of uh, soft skills versus hard skills. Um, uh, both what uh, Helen and Justin said of like, you can always learn the hard skills. Absolutely. You can always learn those. Um, it's the not be a jerk, I think, is the thing that um, you kind of got to. Uh, it's for me, I would whittle it down to it's communication skills, right? Um, in every, um, in every, variety of work and what you do um whether it's design or not but particularly in design it's you just need to communicate the vision in here um out there uh for everyone else to buy in and 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 help make your idea or you know or the idea a reality um so i think it boils down to i think what you could say is communication skills um and how you best communicate and if um you know brandy mentioned that uh, old school and drawing everything by hand um, and a new generation uh, with computers. Um, I think as long as you can communicate that well in whatever venue um, or whatever area of film, television, theater, live entertainment, anything, um, I think that's where you can thrive, right? To Justin's point, it is, we are, it, design is design and we can design everything. It's, it's how you communicate it and back to don't be a jerk, um, <laughs> communicate it well, communicate it politely, um, make those connections um uh get you know get the buy-in from people to want to tell your story with you or the story with you um i think that's what you need and i think you can thrive um in any area um, of this industry all right rob i'm gonna pick on you again still don't mute uh quite yet so also as a ucsd alumni i'm really curious to hear if there was a class a program or a tool that exists now that you wish had existed when you first started out, whether it be your undergrad or grad or earlier or later than that? Um, absolutely. And um, I will, I guess, shamelessly plug Teed with this. Um, and it's just something that uh, I think all of us here uh, can appreciate of. Um, and there's nothing wrong with, uh, I went to school, I went to uh, undergrad and a master's program. and. Uh, for design, uh, design for theater, design for uh, like theater technology. Um, uh, it was very, actually I went uh, theater and dance, but um, yeah, like uh, it's all about storytelling, right? And we focus a lot on the art, which was fantastic. It, it, it was a way for me to develop my skill sets to on how I want to tell stories, different ways you can. Um, the programs I went to um, were amazing at that. Um, what we lacked, and I can't even blame them because as a professor, I would want to teach design. I wouldn't want to teach. How do you make it in life as a designer because you work in an industry um, where there's, uh, I think it was mentioned earlier, like there's not a lot of people who do this work. Um, it's hard to kind of get in the, in the door. Um, it's hard to make money. Do you, uh, like, do you join a union? Do you do, um, uh, you know, how do you talk to a, a, a goose? Um, all these little things where um, uh, I think you, I'm getting, sorry, I'm getting distracted with the pictures. <laughs> um, uh, I think that the classes that I would want to learn that I wish I was taught was um, the business end of being a designer is what I'm trying to say. So essentially, um, like when you make, when you learn all these skill sets and you get out there into the real world, well, how do you apply that to uh how do you how do you get a job how do you you know what do you do do you, like um nobody told me um that like you have to uh put in so many hours to join a union right uh, these are like little things that uh um 
a W-2? Uh, like what, you know, what, what's the appropriate tax form? Do I start my own LLC? Do I, am I in my own business? Uh, a lot of these things that um, I never, uh, I never knew that. I, I learned a lot about being an artist, um, not the business of being an artist. Awesome. Thank you, Rob. How about you, Brandy? Wow. Okay. Um, so I think that one of the biggest uh, downfalls that schools don't teach, and, and again, yes, we, we went to school, we got our degrees, and, and at the time, you know, like at my, at my school, we were told that they were going to help us, you know, get jobs right out of school. But then as you graduate, you know, it becomes a, I don't know if it's a money thing or whatever, but then they're, they're on to other students that are still taking course, and then you're kind of on your own. So you have to learn how to pound the pavement yourself. And, and it's just like what Rob was speaking to. Nobody ever taught us like, okay, well, if you get into film and TV and, and the art department, uh, what is the art department? Nobody ever outlined what the art department was or what all the different departments were in the industry that you could get into. So, so there's so many different facets of, of this entertainment industry that you can go into that I think uh, that they don't teach enough in school and that they didn't really uh, help us learn how to network. And I think that's the biggest thing that we try and teach our students now is how to network, how to put yourself out there, how to stay naive and just get your get your information out there and get into the circles because unfortunately i think and it may be still true i'll let everybody else chime in on this too but for me it was very much um being in the right place at the right time and they say that everybody always says that in the industry but it was true i mean i landed my very first job as a pa on a major film just because i was naive and i drove up to the security uh, gate and I said, hey, what did they do here? And he's like, well, they make movies. And I was like, oh, well, is anybody hiring? Looking for somebody that can do art. I can do art. And he just happened to let me in. It was a freak thing. Probably wouldn't happen today. But uh, and then from there, I was able to get into an art department. And then I learned, oh, this is what they do. And then I got fascinated and learned so much more. A and I so wish that they would have uh, prepped us a little bit more in school coming out uh, with that knowledge base, just with a little bit more uh, uh, ground underneath of you to, to get going. And um, more so to feel confident, to feel comfortable and confident getting out into the industry. Because otherwise, you think it's a pretty scary industry and you think that there's all these things that you're not supposed to do. But stay naive and get out there. And I, I think that that's just one of the biggest things that I know that I like to uh, preface in our TEED courses, and that's where it all came from, was networking and building a resource group. And, and again, once you build your network, your network expands and it keeps expanding and they know somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody, and then all of a sudden it's very cyclical. It all comes back around. So that's what I, what I miss coming out of school. So, so speaking to all those that are coming out of school, um, <clears throat> do any of y'all have any advice for those who want to get into this industry? That's maybe not right place, right time. Yeah, I, you know, I could jump in real quick. I, I, I'd like to talk about it in, in my class with TEEDS uh, for designing for themed entertainment and experiences. Um, but really the, the, I guess a couple of quick ones are touching a little bit on what was the, in the last question, but uh, best advice is like, keep your options open. Uh, I, like I said, I've, I've uh, fell in love with this industry and uh, with, with the Disney parks specifically uh, have always wanted to be an Imagineer and that time just hasn't come for me yet. And it may not. And that's totally fine. I've gotten to work on some other amazing projects um, with some other big companies like Universal, Think Wells, Meow Wolf. Um, so like find the opportunity uh, to work on the coolest projects uh, that, that are out there and, and ones that you're going to be able to go in there and, and make an impact and, and put your stamp on it as a designer, as a creative, as a producer, whatever your role is on any of those jobs, take the opportunity that, that you know, 
interests you the most, uh, but gives you the opportunity to, to kind of jump in on those things. Uh, and second, the one that I always uh, say in, in, in my class as well, that is always like a like rough one to say, but one thing I wish I knew coming out of school, and it kind of touches a little bit on what Rob was saying, was those uh, skills of like how to do um, just life as a designer. Uh, but one was my first job, I worked at, uh, at, a, at a company uh, that no longer exists, Rethink Leisure and Entertainment, uh, and our project, uh, basically lost lost its steam and, and its funding and whatnot. And uh, we are we were laid off from our project. Uh, layoffs were a thing that I just didn't know how to grapple with because it was just like, oh, I'm gonna get a job as a designer and I'm just gonna do this thing and it's gonna be great. Um, and so I think there's a little bit of a level of like understanding like some of the real ins and outs of the business side of the industry. Uh, so that way you're aware of, you know, what to keep an eye out for uh, and, and, you know, prepare yourself that you can go out there and, and put out the best work and a lot of the times, some of those projects end uh, because the project actually ends or that, you know, th that it just isn't going to come to fruition and you have to make adjustments uh, in your career. Uh, so just stay loose, uh, say yes to as many things as you can uh, and, and don't be too, you know, pigeonholed on one direct idea of what you expect your future in this industry to be. Um, it is probably the quick three pieces of advice that I've got for you. <laughs> Yeah, definitely can attest as someone who's just just broken into this. It's it's about saying yes and taking opportunities. Helen, what are your thoughts? I completely agree with Justin. I think um, being being willing to pivot um, and make it work, especially at the beginning of your career, it's it's so important. Um, getting your feet wet and just designing as much as you possibly can is is the most important thing. Um, and after a few years of learning what you like, what your preferences are, I think the number one thing that I wish someone had taught me is you need to find a place that celebrates you, not just tolerates you. Um, and that's when your career really starts to grow. Um, it does take a few years to figure out um, where you fit in and what kind of work you actually want to be working on. But the biggest thing is you need to find people who are on your team who celebrate you. Yeah, definitely. And Ron, um, just real quick here, I'll I'll just say uh, everything they they said was great. Um, I would always just say, don't stop believing. Like, if you know, if you want, if you want it, go for it. Um, it is, it's, it's not always easy. Um, but don't let that deter you. If that's, uh, if you know, if you want to be, if you want to be a designer, if you want to be an artist, if you want to do, you know, be in this industry, um, go find it. Um, and and. There will be hurdles um, and there will be, you know, uh, disappointments along the way, but um, just keep on going if that's what you want. And if that's not, it's okay too. Um, but yeah, so keep on it, like keep on doing it and you'll find, you'll find a way. There's no, as we've already discussed, there's no one track to get there. So. Definitely. And so I think now we're going to transition into some of the audience questions. So our first question comes from Haley. In honor of Production Design Week, what has been the most fulfilling moment slash story that you've experienced in your job? Do you, and do you have any advice for those looking to enter the industry soon? I think we just covered. Uh, does anyone like to jump in? I will. I'm going to jump in right away. Uh, most fulfilling... Um, so my job uh, working on Halloween Horror Nights uh, came as, you know, again, as a, a weird thing. I didn't realize that I was so into Halloween as I am. And I used to be deathly afraid and I'm now completely over that. Uh, so it's been years of transitioning. But but I think that it's just it's a love and it's it's just that that passion for for that final product that we create and and just uh again seeing seeing the guest experience what you get to develop and put out there i've always said that when i drive up the hill uh headed to work at universal studios every day coming up from lancashire boulevard and you pass the tram a stop where all the guests are getting ready to go into the park for the day or for the night. And I always got, get little butterflies even still to this day, because that's why we do this. We do this for them, for the guest experience. And uh, it, it, that I just, 
absolutely adore that part. And with the whole Halloween becoming a, a beast of a project, uh, everybody hears me say this, but they're my babies. They've become my babies. I nurture, I watch over every aspect from, again, paper to, you know, decoration design all the way up for my designer's vision to, to take hold. And I'm a part of that and, and they're my babies. And then we watch over them until the last day of the event coming up, you know, on Halloween night. Uh, so, so everybody can have the exact same experience as from day one to the last and final day. So those are my babies. So I think every project I've, I've just nurtured and kind of gotten something out of. Um, so I don't, th I think for, for me, it's every project, but specifically for Halloween, the, you know, they, they, they are my baby projects. Um, I totally love to echo that too. Uh, but, uh, I, not so much Halloween, um, but, uh, for Grinchmas was my biggest one. And, um, when I, when we were able to do Lunar New Year and bring in, um, Kung Fu Panda, um, and Poe's World, um, the most fulfilling thing for me, um, is seeing the faces of the guests when they walk in. Um, I've, uh, I came from a theater background um, and typically in theater, you know, uh, I would go out, we would do, I would design a show and then they would, um, and I don't even stay, like they don't usually pay me to stay for opening night. <laughs> so I don't, I typically, I don't always see the audience reaction. Um, witnessing that and seeing just, I mean, seriously, like when the, when the face lights up on a kid who walks in and they see your work out there, um is is by far totally amazing it's and that's what brings me so much fulfillment in my job so, so moving on to our next audience question would love to hear comments on transitioning into production design from other design careers i.e interior architect etc thank you i can jump in on that um, I went the other direction from production design to other careers, but um, uh, I think, like we said previously, there's a lot of overlapping skill sets with um, telling a story, a lot of overlapping programs, and, you know, just being a good communicator. Um, but one of the biggest things that help, has helped me through transitioning into experiential marketing um, is having enough confidence of what you do bring to the table that you don't feel ashamed asking questions um, and admitting what you don't know. Um, so you can you can build a group of people of, of trusted coworkers and managers and and um, have a place to learn and grow and stay curious. And it doesn't matter what age, what experience you are, just keep staying curious and learn as much as you possibly can. That's my advice. Awesome. Would anyone else like to speak on this one? Once, going twice? Okay, all right. Let's move on to our third audience question. How do you find that right place, right time? Uh, yeah, with so many with so many remote environments, like where yeah, where is that? What are what are you seeking out? Does anyone have? I can jump in real quick on this one. Uh, yeah, I think awesome. uh, there's a level of um, right place, right time. It, it really, obviously, I, I I'll keep using my my own personal career, but like ended me out wolf at, in 2021. We were still very much in the the heat of the pandemic uh, and trying to figure out where I was going to go next. Uh, it really came down to at that point, you know, we're going to be remote. Uh, what projects are going to interest you the most? Kind of like I was saying earlier, uh, finding that thing that is going to get you out of bed in the morning and go out there and 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 design something or build something or be in the field or whatever it is, uh, is I think you know imperative to you know, figuring out that right place for you. And kind of like Helen said earlier, like finding some place that's gonna celebrate you and, 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 you know, having conversations in your interview process with whatever that job might be and asking questions. It's just as much of an interview uh, for them as it is for you. Uh, I, I kind of view it as, you know, take the time to invest and figure out about the company itself um, and then, you know, understand that like every job in the end is there's going to be things that are good and bad about it. Uh, but really, where is the place that you can find uh, yourself growing the most? Uh, and then outside of that, uh, getting into any kind of networking stuff, uh, going to uh, uh, 
uh, working with uh, the essential art department, going to different mixers, conversations like this. Uh, there's a lot of different industry, uh, you know, organizations to, to kind of get out there to start to grow your network, get to know people. So that way, when you start on day one, it is a small industry. You'll probably know a few people that might be in, in the company there with you. And I'm going to jump in and just preface that right time, right place, you don't make happen. It yes. happens just amoebically. It happens on its own. So when you're networking and when you're, say, you're at an event, or I always speak to a young lady that is now working in my art department with me. Uh, I, I speak about her Chardonnay. Uh, she was at a, a TEA, a themed entertainment association event, and they came to the park and we got to tour. And it just happenstance, right place, right time. I ended up on the bus sitting right next to her and I just started a conversation. She looked like she was an artist perhaps and I started talking to her. We conversed a little and then all of a sudden I told her if you're into this industry and you want to you know, stay connected, you have to connect with me. I'm not gonna come out for you because I'm so busy and everything's going on and so many people wanna connect. So you have to connect with me. And she did, she stayed connected, she came in, she wanted to throw in her resume. And then all of a sudden, you know, here, 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 here we are. She's now working in my department, um, in our art department for us. So the right place, right time, you don't make happen. It, it, it just happens on its own, but you have to put yourself in the places and in the resources and in the environments in order to make those moments happen. Hopefully that makes sense. I think we have one more audience question. Is there a secret to balance working in a chaotic and creative industry while also being sure to come off as reliable, concise, and logical? Oh, wow. Okay. Um, uh, if you can leave the question up there for a second, uh, but I can take this one. Yes. Uh, I don't, um, I think the secret to, I think the secret is being honest and true to yourself and your capabilities. Um, uh, and that's, I think, what what will get you um, through the chaos of this industry, right? Um, and that's when people will know you're reliable um, as well. So um, don't don't do don't commit to jobs that you will overtax yourself and then either later not not be able to fulfill them, um, which means you go back on your your word, or you don't fulfill them well enough because you didn't budget enough time for you or you know whatever you needed to do to do the job because you were trying to get it done to check the box so um i think what the the thank you the the the, the truest thing would be the be honest with yourself and your capabilities that will by far go further along um and it will tie into what everyone was just saying about right place right time and like don't be a jerk and like people will remember you for that they'll know that like if you ask you know if you ask helen if she can do a thing and she says she can um, and she delivers on time, great. If you ask Ellen, Helen if she can do a thing and she'll tell you she needs X amount of time more, but she delivers on it, they'll know that she's reliable. Um, I think uh, there's a little bit of that, the people pleasing, you gotta, that culture of like, you gotta break your back to get ahead, um, which I understand and I came from that as well. But um, I think the for me, the biggest thing for a work-life balance is that you treat yourself well and you treat yourself, uh, and you, you, you speak honestly about what your capabilities are, that will go further along because then people will know that you are reliable, that you can commit to things, um, and what you, and then and then you can also then find the balance in your life to make sure that you get yourself and your health. You come from a healthy place. You come a place where you can accomplish all these things that um, hopefully is fulfilling to you um, because you're not burnt out, right? Um, uh, to what Justin said of like find that thing that gets you up in the morning. Um, if that thing that gets you up in the morning is slowly killing you, that's not good. <laughs> so um, that's also a good thing of like that thing that gets you out in the morning, you want to also kind of uh, nurture that as well and make sure that it's still a, a thing that is uh, healthy for you to do. Um, I love I love a good work-life balance. Um, and the funny thing is my work-life balance, um, most of the time I'm doing all these fun things that are like within the industry that I enjoy and it brings me joy and then excites me to do more of what I want to do in the in the world and how do I create. So um, that's what I would say to you is be true to what you can do and that will take you a long way. And I think you will navigate the chaos of this industry very well. Awesome, well put, Rob. <laughs> so one more question. 
Uh, as an instructor or a creative working with new talent coming up in the industry, what is unique to you about the essential art department and what it offers? And if you're teaching an upcoming course, we'd love to hear about it. Yeah, I, I could start. I, I think um, I think I got all that question. Uh, I, I think really being able to you know help talk to students and 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 impart as much knowledge. I've only been doing this for you know just about ten years now, and uh, it has flown by. And uh, you know, I think there's uh, there's still so much that I'm learning, and I think we'll always be learning about this industry. Um, but I think you know what's unique about what the essential art department does. Uh, and, and I'm glad to be a part of it, is that we're able to try to give students the opportunity to uh, understand some of the information that maybe we wish we knew, like we were saying, uh, prior to getting into the industry. Uh, it, it, there's a bunch of different avenues all of us came through to get to where we are. Uh, there's a lot of things that I wish someone just had told me, like, hey, you know, keep an eye out for this. I think Rob said, you know, what's a, what's a W-2? Like, let's figure out how this stuff works, or how do you freelance, or any of those things. Uh, and I think just getting students the opportunity to have a accessible way to get in the door um, and understand you know how the industry works is a phenomenal uh, resource for for students uh, really anywhere of uh, not even students honestly it's, it's just anybody that is interested in getting in this industry uh, I, I couldn't recommend enough you know taking uh, either my class or or any of the other amazing classes that are part of teeds um, which uh, we we just opened up uh, a I think I believe it's today uh, we're, we're doing another round of uh, my class which is designing for themed entertainment and experiences which is as the name implies solely focused on uh, kind of just a very uh, early uh, rudimentary understanding of what themed entertainment is uh, with the different jobs the different understandings of uh, the industry itself. I bring some friends on in. Uh, we have some conversations. Uh, we work on a fun little project that kind of starts to kick off uh, a potential portfolio for for uh, people that are just getting started. Uh, or if you're very seasoned, and you know, it's another fun themed entertainment uh, related project. So uh, as the little uh, scroll is going by and saying that, uh, we just opened up uh, enrollment. So uh, if you're interested, I uh, hope to see you in class. This class will be later uh, in the early part of 2024. Oh my goodness, time is flying. But uh, yeah, hope to hope to see you and, uh, and honestly, uh, go take any of the other amazing classes part of Teeds as well. Awesome. Um, I'm just going to, oh, are we ready to round out? Rob, did you have one last thing to say? Uh, sure. I, uh, I'll say something real quick uh, that I, uh, that I, what I find unique about uh, Teed. Um, uh, I just want to say that like, uh, of all the th of all the uh, online uh, courses that I've, I've uh, kind of been privy to, I don't know a lot, but like uh, the, and that I've uh, and any other uh, academic uh, setting of learning design, um, what I've noticed is that it's always very specialized, um, and they ask I ask you to specialize. I when I talk about my path, I talk about how I went from this to this to this to, to being you know a designer, um, and what I find the most unique about Teed. Um, that I love is that it's almost the opposite. It is, it is open to all at any level for anyone who just wants to understand and be a part of the art department. Because the truth is, there's so many areas of the art department um, that's not just being a production designer. And you might meet someone who doesn't want to be a production designer who had to go to school to, to do to study production design because they just wanted to be a prop artisan. Um, uh, or a scenic painter, right? So um, I, uh, what I value most about uh, the essential art department is that it is very much open to a lot more, um, a lot more people and a and a, and a, and a broader scale. Awesome, and uh, you know that's why Jamie and I created um, the program that we did is because we did see a need. We felt the need coming out of school to, you know, to teach, uh, to help, to nurture, to help everybody get out there and get networked and actually, you know, discover what's what's actually available in this industry. And um, that's a big portion, uh, you know, of the beginnings of what the essential art department um, started with, and that's our uh, our crash course, our art department crash course. And, and it really is just trying to outline. Um, it's just jam packed. Uh, there's 25 years worth of knowledge in my head that I always try and get out to everybody because you need to have it. We need to 
get it out to the generations coming up because you you guys are going to take over for us and i want you to at least have you know some of the knowledge that that i i gained over my years of experience and jamie and and all of our all of our uh, instructors that we bring on to the essential art department uh, we're all working current working industry professionals. And um, that's what I think is very special because we can offer uh, that uh, things that are happening now and it helps us to bring in innovation and stay up with technology. And we're always, uh, we're fairly new and we're always trying to expand. And again, uh, uh, we have a, an amazing group, a small group of instructors that are so dedicated to what they do and so, precise and elegant with what they're teaching and and it's what everybody out there needs to be taught there there is a, there is a little bit of a gap out there and i just want to fill it because again i want you guys to know what's in my head and and how beautiful this industry is especially if you're a creative and you want to see your stuff out there and be realized uh, you have to have pathways to get there. And that's what we're trying to build is a network, a community, tons of resources between everyone uh, that's involved with the essential art department. Uh, so, uh, you know, likewise, uh, we're starting our 2024 calendar and the crash course, our art department crash course will be uh, uh, heading up our six week class starting in March. So registration is open for that one as well. And again, uh, the essential art department, we're, we're molding and we're adding new classes all the time. And I, we gear our, our program to what the students need. So we let the students drive what they need, what kind of uh, classes need to be taught. So again, we're trying to stay up with technology, stay current. We're all current and out there in the industry and we're all so passionate. And I hope that everybody that takes a TEED course feels that and gets that um, out of uh, everybody. And, and again, we're going to look to Helen and Rob to teach courses with us, hopefully in this next coming year as well. And um, yeah, we're just, I'm excited just to uh, have the opportunity to get the knowledge out and keep inspiring you guys out there to just keep creating and keep going because it's going to be out there forever. So just make it happen. Have fun. Well, thank you so much, Brandy. And thank you so much to everybody who was able to um, be on this panel. And thank you for everybody who tuned in to watch. We're unfortunately out of time. But um, check out the Central Art Department's website, the socials, and um, the production uh, designers collective as well.